Me and my family are going to Disneyland Paris and honestly, I cannot wait to go to Disneyland. It's going to be amazing. I cannot wait to take you along with us. We're going to be there for three nights and four days and we're staying at Sequoia Lodge, which actually I've never stayed at Sequoia Lodge before. So I really can't wait to show you around Sequoia Lodge and show you what that's all about and what it's like. It's meant to be a really, really lovely hotel. So I can't wait to do that. Um, but it's now like 4.30 in the morning and we've got our Eurostar at six o'clock. So we need to get over to King's Cross St. Pancras, but we actually stayed over in the travel lodge at grazing road i think it's called grazing road um to be fair it was a really uncomfortable sleep um i know there's other hotels like premier in hub and that kind of thing which is nearby um this was quite uncomfortable it was very warm in the room because it's february very warm in the room i could hear the district line going past literally like every couple of minutes so it was just crazy like it was really i don't feel like i maybe had like an hour sleep at most it wasn't that great but yeah we're gonna start making our way over to king cross st pancras now for our euro star but if you're new around here then a big hello from me my name is sam and i post lots of disney theater travel and lifestyle content so if you like that kind of thing make sure you're hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out anything i've got the mickey sweatshirt on so let's go and make our way over to disneyland paris i cannot wait bye room and this here is my outfit of the day. So I've got my Mickey sweatshirt on. I'm wearing just blue jeans and my Air Forces. Um, quite a simple outfit, but it works well for Disneyland Paris. And I've got this super dry coat on because it's meant to be quite rainy at Disneyland Paris, which is a bit annoying, but um, I feel like this is a good coat for the rain as well. So that is the plan. But this is where the travel lodge is just here. And then literally St. Pancras is just over there. So it's literally like a three, four minute walk away. Um, it's quite quiet because it's only like half four in the morning. So it's not too bad. And the Eurostar that we're getting today is the 601, I think it is, to Paris. Disneyland Paris don't do a direct Eurostar anymore. It basically just means that now you have to either, you can either get a train to Lille and then change over from Lille to Disneyland Paris, or you can go and get a train into Paris itself and then from Paris go and go to Disneyland Paris. So that's another way of doing it, um, which is what we're doing today. So we're going to do that. Jack and Sean have got the suitcases. And this here is what St. Pancras International looks like. If you'll come in here at like six o'clock, it's pretty much all closed. There's like one bakery open, but this here is our train, the 601 to Paris. That's the one we're getting today. I must say it's looking very quiet too. Normally the queue is quite long, but I think because we're getting uh, such an early train, it's nice and empty, which is lovely. You can literally just stroll through, which is the best, best feeling when it's like that. You can see literally no one's around. Honestly, that was literally so smooth. Like, within like five minutes, we was through security at the Eurostar, which was great. Um, but yeah, we're now gonna go and find our carriage, which is carriage 17, which is the complete other end. So we're gonna walk all the way down there. Um, but they opened the gate like 20 minutes earlier, which is great. Well, this is very exciting. Can't wait to go on the Eurostar. I love going on the Eurostar. It's like the best way to get to Disneyland. Bienvenue à bord de cette Eurostar à destination de Paris Gare du Nord. Une fois encore, mesdames et messieurs, il se dit pas. Right, so we've just made it to Gare du Nord and I have to say like Eurostar is such a good service. We slept most of it and um, it was very very quiet so I didn't want to like vlog too much but I've got a few like little bits of footage but it's very dark outside for most of it but we're here in Paris now which is so cool. Uh, we're going to start heading now to the RER. We've got to get two trains, you can't get a direct train to Disneyland Paris. So we're going to get the RER blue line which is the B um, to Chalet House I think it's called and then we're going to go and get the red A line which is to Oh, I'm carrying this now. Uh, the red A line, which then goes to Marneval, which is the station you need for Disneyland Paris. So it should take about an hour, I think. Um, it needs to work out how to buy tickets and that kind of thing. But I'll take you along with me because um, I imagine some of you will be doing this. Um, and yeah, it's not as easy and straightforward as it was to be in just direct to Disneyland Paris, but um, we're doing it and uh, I think it'll be fine. You can also obviously go and get an Uber or something like that from here, but um, it just works well, I think, just go in and get in the metro over to Disneyland Paris. So you just need to look at this like green turquoise area, which is where you can buy tickets. There's like plenty of machines, um, or you can go and speak to the person at the services who can go and do the tickets for you. See, you click English and then you click that you don't have a Navigo pass. And then once you've done that, you actually click on the tickets for MLV Chessy Disney. 
click the full fare or reduced fare if you're on 10 years or younger. Select how many tickets you want. It was five euros per person. And it's sim literally that simple. You just validate your tickets and then it's done. It is so simple. Okay, that was like so straightforward. That was so easy to use that. So I'd definitely like do this again so far. It seems really easy. So now is actually the time when we need to get onto the train. It's very well signposted to be fair. There's lots of signs everywhere. If you're used to like the London Underground and the subway and that kind of thing, like it's so easy to use. So um, we're gonna start making our way now to the RER Blue to uh, Chatelet Le House, I think it's called. And then we can go to Mar Laval on the red line. It sounds more complicated than it is. I think we'll be fine. And we're looking for B South, which is this one. Don't get too confused because B North is going towards the airport. B South is going to where we need to go, which is over this way. I love this stop because as soon as you get off that train, it then shows you RERA and it's a connection to Disneyland, which I love. It has a little Mickey sign. That is so cute. All I've got in my head right now is let's go to Disney, Disney, see Mickey, Minnie. Oh, it's a double decker one. So we've made it to Mile of Al, and honestly, I have to say, that was such an easy journey. Like, once you know what you're doing, um, and you've got Google Maps, and you know what places you need to go to, what stations you need to change, like, it is so easy. Um, it feels so good to be here, though. I've got my ears on, which I'm so happy about. Um, the only thing I'd say is that if you've got too much luggage, it's probably quite difficult, or if you're going with, like, really young children, it might be better just to kind of, like, fork out some money and get, like, an Uber or something like that, just because the Metro can be quite crowded. It was crowded on both trains that we went on. Um, but because we only had two suitcases, it wasn't too bad. Um, there's anything I'd say, but yeah, we're gonna go now. We've got Disney Express luggage, so we need to go over to there. Um, we're at a different place. I've never like entered from this part before, so we need to kind of get my bearings to find out where we got where we are. But oh, it's so good to be at Disney. I'm so happy. This is where you can go and drop off your luggage, so drop off your suitcase, and they'll deliver it straight to your hotel. So when it was the direct euro store, you used to get that included in the price, which was a great perk. Like you'd be able to just kind of go to the park straight away. Whereas now they've changed it so that now you have to, if, because obviously there's not a direct Eurostop service, you've got to go and pay for it. And it's now £72, um, which you can buy it, like book in advance. Um, it's really, really quick service. Like we've got to it seen straight away. I think because there's not a direct service anymore, it's quite quiet. Nobody really uses it. But we've got our passes and it's this lovely Sequoia Lodge one with Bambi. Um, this is the first time I've had this one. The last one that we had was the 30th anniversary. So this is really cute, but this is your tickets for the park and also so uh, your room key, which is great. So you get all of that all there when your magic pass. Um, but let's go to the magic now. <laughs> cannot contain my excitement. I really cannot. I'm home. I'm home. It's such a good feeling. It honestly is the best feeling when you're here. Literally the fact that you've just travelled from London and literally in like three hours, we are here. But we're actually standing here in Disneyland Paris. It's the best feeling ever. And the great thing about getting that train, the 601 train, is that we're here and it's only 11 o'clock. So normally when we got the direct service, we wasn't here till like, till like two or three o'clock. So it's such a good feeling. But we're just gonna go through security now, um, which security here is so nice and quick compared to Florida. Like they literally just put it through a conveyor belt and it's scanned, which is really great. We're gonna go through security and then let's head into the park. This is easily the best entrance to any Disney park. And it's actually the first time as well seeing the Disneyland hotel without any scaffolding on it for such a long time. So it just feels so amazing to be here. It really does. I also know now they're letting you go into the Disneyland Paris Hotel, which is something I'd like to do. Um, but you have to go and book it now through Lion Bertie at nine o'clock in the morning rather than just go in uh, because it's such a high demand for it at the minute. So it makes sense. But my heart, I can't even take it. It's just so pretty this park. Like. I love Walt Disney World and I really do, I do love like Magic Kingdom, but the way that, the way you come into this park, this never gets old, this. It's just so beautiful, it really is. And in we go to Disneyland Park. I also love this Mickey clock at the top. I love it so much. <laughs> Let's go in. Coming into Disneyland Paris too for the first time. I always love to go through these ones here uh, rather than in the centre because you see the castle straight away there. Whereas I like it kind of being like unwrapped like a present. Like I like walking and going walking around the corner and seeing the castle that way. So I always walk through either this one over here or the one on the far corner over there. 
Loving this new decoration on the floor too. And then over here, Pluto. It keeps changing to all different characters. I think this is for this new event that they're doing. You leave today and enter worlds of history, discovery and ageless fantasy. Ah, here we go. Oh, I love it. The music, the smells right now. Just walking around the corner. Oh, there's a tree in the way. Oh, I see it. It is so beautiful. Oh, and I think the parade's right down at the bottom at the minute. It's their new Splashes of Colour parade that they're doing. Oh, I have to go down there, but it is so beautiful. I love this castle so much. Walking right in the middle of Main Street, USA. The parade is on right down there. That's the million Splashes of Colour. Um, and I love the castle. It's got loads of little lights in it at the moment as well. That is so cute. I love it. Easily, this is the most pretty castle that Disney have ever made. It is honestly stunning. I love the colours, like, it's just perfect. I love how it's like in the mountains as well, like in the rocks. Um, we will go and watch this parade at some point, but I think it's actually finishing at the moment. But this was like the replacement of the one for the 30th anniversary, which was my favourite parade ever that Disney done. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to go and see this. All these decorations as well, like it's such a spring vibe at the moment here at Disneyland Paris. This song is definitely a tune as well. Loving it. It's goofy. I feel like I always come to Sam Paris and I walk into the park the first time there's a parade going on. It's just always my luck. But um, we're going to go. First port of call is to get some pictures in front of the castle, which at the moment it is very crowded because the parade has just finished. So it's going to be a little bit annoying trying to get a picture. But we're going to try nonetheless. So um, let's try and get close to the castle. Just looking so pretty. I love her so much. We're gonna go and head into Adventureland first because I need to go and get a pirate's experience again. I'm gonna start off by going on to Pirates because I feel like Pirates is always the best way to start a Disney trip. I always start on either Pirates or Haunted Mansion and more times than not it's Pirates because who just doesn't love the smell of Pirates? It's just the best smell that gets you in the Disney spirit and that's what I love so much. So I'm gonna go head over to Pirates now. It's only a 20 minute way which isn't too bad at all. Um, I feel like Pirates doesn't ever really get a queue although they have here just started um, with Premier Access like Fast Track um, line which not too sure how I feel about that um, because I feel like it always makes the standby queue a lot longer but um let's go and head on pirates because i love pirates it's just it's the best yo ho yo ho the queue is so yo. cool for this ride the theming in here is just everything i think i'm gonna have to take my ears off for this one because this one has more drops don't it this yeah. one is definitely like one of the better pirates of the caribbean it's one of my favorites um but it has like a bigger drop i feel like there's like two or three drops on this one yeah probably i can't remember but the smell is so good in here it does smell amazing I just, it's slightly different to the one at walt disney world but i think as you go further into the ride it the smell intensifies even more but i just love that pirate smell I'd love to eat in here one day. I feel like the menu isn't like 100% what I'd want, but I'd love to just like overlook this ride. Pirates of the Caribbean spirit jersey when you exit the shop. I think this is this for just for kids? No, I think they've got adult sizes as well, but that's really nice. It has like yo ho yo ho Pirates Life for Me. And then at the back it says Pirates of the Caribbean, which is actually really cute. That is how much? Does it have a price? 
80 euros, which is quite pricey for a spirit jersey, but I actually really like that. I really like these mugs as well. They've got this one, which is like Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, Tower of Terror, Big Thunder Mountain, and Phantom Manor. Uh, 35 euros, which I think is really good. I actually might go and get these on the last day because I love them. Although I do usually say, don't wait until the last day because things go very quickly at Disney, but they are beautiful. I love them. I love Pirates of the Caribbean here so much. It's definitely a longer ride, um, but I just prefer it. I think the animatronics are better in here. The story that it goes on, like it's, I feel like because it's longer, there's actually like a story to the ride, which I really, really love. Whereas Walt Disney World, it's kind of rushed in a lot of ways. But um, luckily we went on it when we did, because we only waited about 20 minutes. It's now gone up to half an hour and the queue looks quite long. So um, we're going to go and grab something to eat because my tummy is telling me it's time to eat something. We've done our first ride. So we're going to go and get a snack. I might go to Main Street Bakery or something like that and get something sweet because and you're at Disney, I just feel like you need something sweet all the time like before getting something savoury. So I think we're going to go and get something sweet now. We're going to head back to Main Street. It's sort of quietened down so we can get better coffee pictures as well. So we're going to go over there. But Pirates, easily 10 out of 10 ride. I love it here at Disneyland Paris. Been to Cable Car Bake Shop, which is the Main Street Bakery of Disneyland Paris. And they always do some really great eats here. All right, so here are the options for the cookie kitchen, which is inside the bakery. You get the Mickey-shaped cookie, the Mickey-shaped beignet, which I'm going to get this uh, last time I had it, which was so they're only doing it in the Nutella flavour, uh, muffin and vegan cookie. So they are the options that they do. Uh, they've also got pan chocolate, uh, croissants, loads of different options. I just feel like they need some powdered sugar over them. Right, so I've gone for the Nutella Field Mickey Beignet, which last time I had the apricot one, and I remember I liked it, but it wasn't like filled very well, and there was only like a small proportion of it which actually had the apricot. I don't do the apricot one anymore, it's only the Nutella, um, and it's €4.50. Euro but let's give it a try and see what it's like. It means the same. Mm. The filling's only in the middle bit, so the first few bites are just like, it's like bread, it's not really sweet, is it? It's just... See, so yeah, you kind of have to bite off like a whole ear before you get any Nutella, but actually, once you get to, to the Nutella, it's actually really nice. Mm. I think it's good. I just feel like they need to fill the ears. But, yeah, it's a good little sweet snack to have while you're in Disney. Right, what did you think of your beignet? Very good. You liked it, yeah. I actually liked it. The more I think about it, it was a nice snack, but I just feel like it needs more filling in it. Like, for the money, it's not, you know, it's not awful, but I just feel like it's not the best sweet snack out there. Um, it's probably the last time I'm going to get it now. I actually prefer the apricot one over the Nutella one, because um, I think the apricot, because it was thinner, it kind of spread out more in the beignet, whereas that was just like in a really small portion of it. So, not my favourite. But um, we're going to go and head over to It's a Small World and do that, because last time we come here, so it's small was shut for refurbishment and that was shut for a really really long time so um i love it's a small world actually i know it gets a bit of hate it's a bit of an, an annoying attraction but i love it's a small world so let's go over there and do it um and it's never got a long wait really it's a small world so let's go the happiest cruise that ever sailed i love this it's a small world i love like the exterior of it compared to magic kingdom this is like a beautiful it's a small world we're about to go on the happiest cruise. It actually always blows me away how quick Disney's operations are. Like, no matter where you are, or whatever Disney park you're in, the speed that they get people through on the rides, it's just like, there's nothing else like it. Compared to, like, the UK. Like, we move so quickly in this queue. Like, so quickly. And... It's just amazing, like, it's just amazing the way Disney create their rides. We have such high capacity so that people just keep going on. Like, literally, it's been like 10 seconds and then like four boats have gone again. Like, it's, it's insane. But this is why I love Disney. This is why Disney are number one of the theme park game. Number one completely. Because they know what they're doing. They are just incredible. Love Disney. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mexico part is my favourite bit of this. I'd love to go to Mexico one day. This is the place I'm getting right now. It was so nice getting back on it to Small World at Disneyland Paris because it's been such a long time since I was last on that one. I think like 2020 was the last time I was able to go on that one, so I absolutely loved it. And I made me realize how many new or different scenes that there are. Like there's things that I've never noticed in that one before, like the Mexico scene. I'm sure I've never seen that before, but that was really cute. And there was a like Rome scene with the Colosseum and that was great. So absolutely love it, Small World. It's one of them great rides. And actually it's shorter here, which actually is a benefit because the one at Walt Disney World, I think it's something like, 13 14 minutes where that one's only like nine minutes so it makes such a difference actually once you listen to that song for 13 minutes it's a long time i've listened to that song so i'll take i'll take nine minutes I definitely will take nine minutes but i've just headed into discovery land because i want to go onto high Space mountain this is actually my second favorite coaster but because big thunder mountain isn't open here at the minute this would probably make it my top coaster here at disneyland paris i love it so much it's so different to space mountain in the states or anywhere else actually because it's got the launch and it's got the star wars overlay which is pretty Cool. It's not my favourite thing, but um, yeah, let's go on to Hyperspace Mountain. The queue at the minute is 35 minutes, which isn't bad at all for this. Um, it does actually get a lot busier later on. Um, so yeah, let's go on Hyperspace because it's just such a great ride. It's one of my, it's my favourite mountain ride here. Best. That's the cannon that you get shot through, and we're almost there. Almost there, guys. Go left. Left is best. Left is always best. This is so cool. I'm so excited. This ride is honestly it's so intense. I love it. Like for Disney to have a ride that's like this intense and have this mini inversion, it's just like out of this world. I just love it so much. It's not taking too long to get here either. That ride was everything, like that is the best space mountain out there. It's amazing. Um, also my hair, what the hell is going on with that? I have no idea, but um, I love that space mountain. If you can get that with a queue that's like less than like 40 minutes, that is so worth it, it's so intense. It kind of gives me like Tron vibes inside. Um, Although it's nothing like Tron, like it's like a well, like a classic sort of roller coaster. It's intense. It has like inversions. I think there was three or four, three or four inversions in the Hyperspace Mountain. I just love it. I just kind of wish it didn't have the Hyperspace Mountain theme. I wish that it was more like a Space Mountain in general. Um, so I feel like going around with the Star Wars music. I feel like it just isn't isn't the best it could be. But uh, we're gonna go and head into into Mickey's Feel Her Magic and just have a little sit down for a while because we've kind of been on our feet for a while now. So we're gonna go Feel Her Magic, which I always love. Can't film in here, but it's great to sing along although here we'll be singing along in French it seems so so we'll be doing that but yeah let's go and do feel how magic I love these posters as well they're so cute we are in they do shows every 20 minutes um, I like to sit somewhere in the center but sometimes they ask you to move all the way up but there we are we're in do you remember last time like every time we come here we go in Huh? It kept closing every time we was here yeah yeah so last time we come here literally every time it kept shut in but it seems like we're actually gonna watch the show now. 20 minutes later. You know, one of my favorite things about coming to a Disney park, as somebody who's been to Disney park so many times, is seeing other people's reactions, like when it's their first time, like, feel hard magic. Like, I watch it, and obviously I know what's coming next. I know, like, the order of the songs and everything, and the people next to me, like, their reactions were so cute. Like, I think that's what makes it so magical, with seeing other people's reactions now. Um, we just got, tried to get some more coffee pictures. I really wish they had, like, photo pass photographers here at Disneyland Paris. It would make such a difference. Um, but also, the the sun is like blinding us. I should have actually, well, I brought my sunglasses, but um, we're currently bothered to get them out. But we're gonna go and head into Frontierland. The only ride open in Frontierland is Phantom Manor, so we're gonna go and do that. Uh, because unfortunately, Big Thunder Mountain is shut, which honestly make, breaks my heart a little bit because Big Thunder Mountain is my favorite attraction in Frontierland. Uh, my favorite attraction actually in the Disneyland Park, so it's such a shame. But we're gonna go in Phantom Manor, which is also one of my favorites. This is easily the most beautiful Frontierland of any Disney park. I love that you've got the fun the Mesa River, which is all around Big Thunder Mountain, and then Phantom Manor, which is just over there, which I love Phantom Manor, it's so great. I love that it kind of fits in with the Frontierland thing. But um, yeah, we just saw somebody walking around the Big Thunder Mountain track, but can't see them anymore. They seem to have disappeared. But I literally am so gutted that it's sharp. But I'll be back for it soon. I will be back for it soon. Yeah, we got that last thing. We go 
into Phantom Manor. And this is the work that they seem to be doing on Big Thunder Mountain. There's so many people working on it, but it seems to be mostly on this splashdown section. This like haunted mansion, Phantom Manor, really gives me like Bates Motel vibes. Like the look of the house is so creepy. I love how it's like Western and like on the other side you've got Boot Hill, which I'll show you Boot Hill when we come out. But Boot Hill is like a nice little story which kind of ties Phantom Manor into Frontierland, which is always really cool. Um, but in we go. There's 999 happy haunts here, but there's room for a thousand. I have more to show you. Entree of This chamber has no windows and no doors, which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out. <laughs> These portraits are so cool how they change. <laughs> I absolutely love Phantom Manor, it's such a good ride. It seemed a lot quicker than I remembered it, like we whizzed through that, it was going such a fast speed today, but um, Phantom Manor is so good. When you exit, if you carry on going straight up, you go to Boot Hill, which is like the graveyard of all like the cowboys that I guess died when Big Thunder Mountain was being constructed and there was a big mine explosion, that's kind of the story around it. Um, but yeah, this is called Boot Hill and it's a little hidden gem that like not many people know about so it's always really quiet around here but these are the boots of leadfoot fred who danced too slow and now he's dead quarreled and fought as man and wife now silent together beyond this life so spooky. It's like really atmospheric. I love it. And one of my favourite things about being up here is the views of Big Thunder Mountain. You get such great views of it. Look how incredible that is. So beautiful. I love it. Oh my God, Disney Paris, their spirit jersey game at the moment is on point. Like, the, I love the Pirates of the Caribbean spirit jersey they had. This is the Big Thunder Mining Company, um, which is really cute. And at the back, it has a Big Thunder Mountain. I love it. I reckon this is 80 as well. Yeah, 80. But that is so amazing. I love that. I really love the t-shirt as well, the Big Thunder Mountain t-shirt. I've got another Big Thunder Mountain t-shirt, but this shop in Frontierland, uh, which is literally right opposite the uh, Rustler Roundup shooting gallery, this shop here always has really great things. And this is the Phantom Manor Spirit jersey, which also is really, really nice. I've got the Haunted Mansion one, which I've actually brought on this trip, which I'm gonna wear on one of the days, but also beautiful when it has Madame Leota in the middle, which is so cute. Again, that's 80 as well, but they're spirit jerseys. I love that they've actually got spirit jerseys on the rides, which is something that we don't always get in Walt Disney World. There's so many walls around Big Thunder Mountain at the minute, just showing that it's closed. But I love this sign, noticed by the order of the Big Thunder Mining Company, no prospectors, no visitors, Big Thunder Mountain and the mines and caverns within are closed for works, which is quite interesting. Big Thunder Mountain opens middle of March, so it's a while since it opens again still, but come on, oh, but this looks really good here. So this is a Casa de Coco, which is a brand new like quick service soap, but this is really cute. This statue of Miguel, I love that. Um, and it looks really well themed, so I'm actually quite peckish, so I might have a look at the menu. So yeah, it's all like Mexican, and if you know me, Mexican is like my thing, I love Mexican, but they've got like beef burritos, uh, chicken burritos, v vegan burritos, like a, a vegetarian salad, and then these look amazing as well, the onion rings look amazing. So yeah, it's not too badly priced either, so I might go and get something in here, because this looks like my kind of thing. Well, the service was a little bit slow actually going to get here, it took quite a while, and we mobile ordered and it still took quite a while, but um, the food actually looks really nice. I've gone for the chicken burrito, um, we've also got the onion rings and the cheesy chicken bites, which 
actually look amazing too. So I'll give it a taste test and see, but this restaurant is so beautiful. Like it's a quick service, but it's so well decorated. Like it's so lovely. Right, let's try. very tasty. It seems really fresh as well. There's lots of like tomatoes and lettuce and you can see the guacamole is like spilling out. It's actually really really good. Right, let's try the cheesy chili bite. Oh. Oh. Mmm. Oh. That is so good. I love that. The onion rings. I like when it's a proper onion inside the batter. Really, really good. It's actually really good quality food. Um, it's quite, it's always on the pricey side for a quick service, I think, considering it doesn't really come with any sides, like everything you buy has to be separate. But everything's really tasty, so can't fault it. If you're coming here, definitely worth getting this Tropico drink. It's like a tropical um, soft drink, but it's really, really tasty. Um, they give it to you in a bottle. It's probably like two cups worth, I reckon. But I actually really, really like this, especially if you don't want a fizzy drink. This is really, really nice. I'm going to go and see the Rhythm of the Pride Lands, which is at the Frontierland Theatre, uh, which is just at the back of Big Thunder Mountain. You see they have it four times a day. This show is amazing, but it's at 12.15, 1.15, 3.50 .15, and 4.50. Um, and it's just in this theatre, which is over here. This show is easily one of the best shows that I've ever seen a Disney park put on. Like I say, it is Broadway West End quality. It's quite a long show. Um, all like your favourite hits from The Lion King and even some songs from The Lion King the musical, like Shadowland and things like that. It's just such a great show and I love seeing it. So I just was so desperate to see it again. So we're going to do it right now. It's one that you have to get here really, really early. Like even now, we've got about 40 minutes to wait and the queue is huge. So... Right, we are in and it's honestly giant in here. Like, we're gonna, I think they're sitting in this middle section first, so hopefully we can be there. Every time I've seen it before, I've been up really, really high, so I'm hoping we can get quite a decent seat today. You can also reserve your seat. Um, it's £13.63 per person, um, and you can do that for this show. You can do it for Mickey and the Magician and Together, which is the new Pixar musical, so um, you can reserve it. I don't really recommend doing it, to be honest, unless like you're in a right rush. Maybe you're here for only one day and you've got a show you want to see, but um, I don't really understand why people do it, and I don't know why Disney offer it as something, but um, there's quite a lot of people actually in the queue for the reservation, so which was really weird. I weren't expecting that, but here we are. But we arrived about half an hour before, and this is our view that we've got, so it's actually not too bad.
always forget how great that show is. It was amazing, weren't it? Amazing. The Lion King show. It's honestly like the best show. It just makes me realise how much I just love the Lion King music, like the whole soundtrack, like from the film and then from the musical. I'd even go as far as saying I actually prefer that version than the actual West End Broadway show of the Lion King. But like obviously it's only a snippet of the Lion King, but it tells the story and it's just amazing. I honestly love it. I could see that show every single day whilst I'm here. I just love it so much. Um, and I get why it's so popular. But it's been here for years now, but um, the queue is like huge still. So it's just a really, really popular show. I love it so much. A Buzz Lightyear Laser Blast. If I remember rightly, every time he came in this last year, Buzz Lightyear was having a shower because the curtain was around him. So let's see if he actually is here today. I can hear him. Oh, he's back. He's back. He's not in the shower. Buzz is here. He's fully clean. And beyond. He's winning. Me. Definitely me. Always me on this front. Always me. Who say? I don't want to. I'm always the winner on this one. Competition time. Here we go. My time to win. Game time. Let me know, does it still count when you've paused? Like when the rider stopped, do you still count your points? Do you stop playing? What do you do? I carry on playing. Level three and level two. Well, I am the champion of that, but um, I'm still nowhere near a galactic superhero. So if anybody has any tips on how to be a galactic superhero, please do let me know because no matter how many times, even with the stops, nowhere near, nowhere near. And I've tried and tried and tried. So any tips, please do let me know in the comments below because I'd love to be a galactic superhero one day. We're gonna go now and head for our spot for the parade, um, which starts at half five. So we can go down here. Um, I'll show you where my favorite place is. If you watch my last season Paris Vlog, you'll know where my favorite spaces for the parade um, it's always nice watching it on main street but i always find that it's just so crowded and i just want to like escape whereas this um is quieter for a longer period of time so you can get a really good space here um so i'll show you what i like so i love to go and stand around this area here so you've got pizzeria bellinotte there and it's a small world over here and basically any of this strip you get a really really good view of uh, the parade which i absolutely love it literally starts off here and it goes down main street as well so that is what i absolutely love so i'm just going to stand here i think that is a perfect view i think and for context we're here at five and there's so much space here like you can get a front row view of the parade whereas main street is starting to fill up already so this is why this is the perfect location for the parade it's where it starts off you're the first one to be able to go back out in the park again whilst the queues are a bit shorter so that's why i absolutely love standing here Really rude people behind us. They decided to think it was okay to try and push us as much as they could. So 
um, ends up with a bit of an argument before the parade actually started, which was not ideal. But um, we're going to actually go and I think head out of the park now for a little bit. We're going to go through the arcade, which is always like the best way to leave if you after the parade, especially. Um, it's kind of like a shortcut straight through. It's something that I absolutely love about Disneyland Paris. It's something they don't have in any other Disney park. So we're going to go through the arcade. I'll show you where it is. There's actually two. There's one on the like Discoveryland side and one on the Frontierland side. Um, it's always just a great idea just to go and walk straight through and it doesn't take any time at all. So this is the arcade here, Discovery Arcade, which literally, as you can see, is pretty much empty. You walk straight through there, which is great. Um, which is great because this is like full of crowds at the minute with the parade going past. So you can actually cut straight through all the way to the train station and leave the park this way. Look how stunning it is in here and it smells so good as well. It's like chocolate brownie smell. It's honestly the best. Right, we've actually had a change of plan because we've decided we are going to go to Sequoia Lodge. I'm going to check in because we've got a text message which basically said that our room's ready. So let's go and check in. So we're going to do that. We normally go and stay in the park for the whole day and then do it. But it's been quite a long day already. So I'm going to go check in at Sequoia Lodge and see where we are. I'll do a little room tour for you and show you what it's all about. Um, it's my first time staying at Square Lodge, but actually it was the same price as staying in Cheyenne or Santa Fe this time. So um, it just had to be done. I really wanted to tick this one off. So I'm quite excited. And here's the remainders of Planet Hollywood, which from what I've heard, they're keeping the interior, but they're gonna get rid of this. That was a, what a rumor that I heard. I think that's true. I love the look of this hotel from the outside. It looks so pretty. Um, so yeah, I assume this is the main reception. So we're gonna go in here. We've got a lodge, which I assume isn't this main part. Um, I'll show you where it is, but um, oh, I can't wait to stay here. Oh wow, look at it in here. I love it. Oh, that's Hunter's Grill, which is one of the restaurants in here. This is really cute. Sequoia Adventure. Chip Dow and Thumper. I love the smell of Disney hotels too. Like, this has such a good smell to it. It's so like, I don't know, I can't even describe it. Disney hotels just have a smell. The reception area is so cute. Right, this hotel seems huge, but they've given us a map to show us where we are. We're at Yellowstone Cabin, I think it's called. So we're gonna go and find the way to it. Um, it's one of the outside cabins. So he told us to walk outside and just follow this path and we'll see Yellowstone Cabin. So I'm not sure, but first impressions, it's really, really lovely actually. It's, a, it's got a really nice theme to it. I like the whole like woodland sort of theme. It's really, really nice. So, oh, is this it? No, I'm not sure. We'll find it. I think we're in a really far away room. Always the case. Always the case that we end up being put in the one that's like at the end of the corridor. But um a room 152, that's what we're looking for. It's not very well signposted, I'm not gonna lie. But the corridor's really cute. I love looking at all the corridors as well. That is so well decorated, I love them. Right, 152. So here's the room. So on the right hand side, you've got the bathroom, which oh, I'm trying to find a light here. So you've got like the sink, which is actually on the outside of the bathroom. So lots of storage under the sink. We've not actually used any of this storage, but there's some storage there for your toiletries and that kind of thing. There's also a hairdryer, which. <laughs> Not very powerful, but I think it kind of does the job. If you've got really long hair, probably not the hairdryer for you. Got a safe and some storage over here. And then you've got like a bath and a shower. And then on the other side here, behind the door is the toilet. And then as you go through into the main part, you've got two double beds. You've got this coffee machine, which uh, actually, I don't know if there's actually any products for it. Might be in a drawer, but there's some storage over here. And then you've got a table, some chairs, and let's see what our view's like. Oh, we've got a car park view, but I love the woodland look, but it's actually really, really cute. I really love it. I actually love the decoration. Like it is quite dated, but I love the Bambi theme. I think it just, it really suits the theme. Oh, and the artwork, didn't even notice that. I feel like this, I'm gonna notice so many little things in this room. I think it's actually really, really cute. And it's always nice to try somewhere different. And I feel like I've done Santa Fe quite a lot. I've done Cheyenne and now I'm trying this one. And so far I'm actually really, really impressed. So we'll see, it's quite warm in here, but this one actually has air conditioning too, which is great. Um, 
But overall, really impressed. Um, I'll let you know what the storage is like. Once we actually start unpacking, we can actually see what the storage is like. But it looks decent, pretty decent if you're here for like two, three nights. Um, overall, impressed. It also has a wireless charging port, which is something I've never really seen in a hotel before. But you just put your phone on there and it does your charging for before you. Before we go out and do any more exploring, this is what the map of Square Lodge looks like. So this is like the main hotel building. You've got like the North Wing, the South Wing, and then you've got your two main restaurants you've got hunter's grill and beaver creek tavern which are both um meant to be really really nice restaurants inside um i think a hunter's grill is the buffet i think i'll have to double check the bus at the front and then where we are we have to go out of this building and then to these separate lodges which are on this side here and we are the first one which is yellowstone lodge and then they also offer the golden forest club here which is like a you pay slightly extra and you like you get food included and drinks included and that kind of thing um, it's called the golden forest club and you can like upgrade your room we haven't got that this time but apparently it's a really good benefit and apparently it's really really worth it if you... this is one of the bars that, that's quite large redwood it looks really nice we might pop in there once i love how cute this one is i love it a few moments later look how cute disney village is looking at night stunning I am such a Disney in the dark kind of person. I love the parks at night. They're just the best feeling. Um, but the plan is we're going to go head back to the main Disneyland park. Um, the fireworks are on at 10 o'clock with the drones on at 9.50. So I'm hoping they're going to be on. Um, yeah. Actually, I'm thinking that they're going to be a complete write-off, to be fair, um, for the next two days, especially because there's going to be lots of rain. So I doubt the drones are going to be on. So we need to try and see them tonight. And we're also going to try and maybe get something to eat. Though I'm not really that hungry, to be honest, but I feel like I need something. Otherwise, I'm going to be hungry when the fireworks finish. This here is the brand new Rosalie, which is apparently meant to be a really, really good French steak restaurant. Apparently, um, it's even better and it's pretty much the same price as Shea Remy in Walt Disney Studios so people saying if you like a steak definitely go there rather than Shea Remy because Shea Remy is good for the experience but um, Rosalie is meant to be a really really amazing steak there's the menu for Rosalie if anyone's interested but they've got like the escargot French onion soup um, the steak like the steak and fries is 25 euros so it's not like really badly priced to be honest um, but they've got like cheeses desserts um, it's just a really classic French meal if that's what you're looking for right we've made it back to Disneyland Park and I feel like I've not even been able to appreciate yet the gazebo actually looking stunning right now and the castle in the dark it's looking so great at the end of Main Street. I'm really not too keen though on these. You can hardly see them really. Um, it's all to do with the million splashes of colour or whatever it's called. But yeah, I'm not really too keen on them on Main Street. What is really strange is it seems like the park is emptying out. Like so many people are walking towards like the exit or entrance. Um, whereas we're like the only ones walking towards the castle right now, which is um, really odd. I don't really know why that's happening. But um, hopefully that's good news for the fireworks. I hope we get a really good spot. Um, I'm going to try and get a spot at about probably about an hour and 20 minutes before. Um, I always do that for my first time seeing the fireworks. I'm not sure what this is all about, but I think something's about to happen. Everyone's just like froze. But I'll be completely honest, I have no idea what this is all about. Um, I think it's all to do with the Splashes of Colour event. Um, everyone seemed to pay attention for the first like minute and then everyone's just kind of now ignoring it. So, no idea what this is all about. It's not gripping at all. No idea. Um, but, on another note, we're going to go and get Casey's Corner, I think. So here we are in Casey's Corner, and here's the menu. So these are the hot dogs that they do. They've got a classic one. They've got one which is uh, the cheddar sauce, bacon, the crispy onions. And they've got another one which has got nachos on top with caramelised onions, and also a veggie one. And um, it doesn't come with fries. You have to get them separately, and drinks are also separate. So they don't do like a meal do or such. But um, oh, I love a Casey's. So we're sitting in Casey's. We've got our hot dogs. It's a bit of a different, like, 
process to what it is in Walt Disney World. Like you go and you order, and then if you want to go and sit down inside the restaurant, you have to get into a queue. So it's kind of frustrating because if the queue's long, your food just goes cold, which doesn't really make sense. Um, but yeah, so anyway, this is what we've got. So this is my hot dog. It has crispy onion inside it, uh, cheese, uh, mustard, and the hot dog. And I also got the French fries, and I've gone for a peach rice tea. It definitely doesn't look as appetising as it does in Walt Disney World, but we'll give it a go. It's still hot. It's a pretty standard hot dog. Mm, not the same. Not the same as America. But it does the job. Okay guys, what actually was that? Like, I am always honest on this channel and I always like to be positive, but that by far was the worst Disney food I've ever had, ever had in my life. Like, it was most gristly, just dirty hot dog. <laughs> like, it was just not, not for me. And actually, it's such a shame because I love Casey's in the US. And last time I come here, well, not last time, in 2020 when I come here and I had Casey's, it was like such a good meal. So I don't know what's happened, but that was not it. That was really, really disappointing. So very disappointed, very upset by that. Just not a great meal. But we're now gonna go and head towards Central Plaza and get a space for the fireworks. Hopefully we get quite a good view. And there's not really many people waiting around at the minute. So I'm gonna go ahead to Central Plaza and watch Disney Dreams, which I'm so excited. I'll show you where I stand for it. So we're in space for tonight's fireworks, which this is our view. I always like to stand where you've got the railing and then you can literally go and see the fireworks going on over here. And um, the reason I like to do that is because nobody can actually push in front of you. That means you're, like, you're at the front of the line, no one's pushing in front of you. Um, so that's why I love that. You can also do that if you stand behind a bin or something like that, that's also another good way. Uh, it just means that no one's pushing you. But this is the view, which I think it's gonna be quite a good view because the drones I think happen mostly over in this area over here. Um, but I've not seen this new drone show. And this is also gonna be a really, really special fireworks because we are gonna be seeing Disney Dreams, which I haven't seen since 2015, which is when I first come here. So it's the same fireworks show. Um, since then it's been Disney Illuminations and I wasn't too much of a fan of Disney Illuminations, but Disney Dreams, I am such a huge fan of. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that again. Um, so this one really need a good view. And also the next few nights are meant to be raining and I really don't think they're gonna do the drone show and maybe they won't not even do fireworks. So this is why like we need to make sure we're here. So we're here an hour and a half um, earlier just to make sure that we are in position and nobody's getting in the way and we've got a good view of the fireworks. Well, they've just put lights on the castle. I'm loving the lights on the turret. It's the new pink and green. I'm so excited to see this drone show.
this is the manic leaving after the fireworks. It was worth it. It was 100% worth it. But I'll give you my full review of the drones and the fireworks show um, when we move a little bit because it's so crowded right now. So just prioritizing getting out and then I'll give you the, my full thoughts on the two shows, but love them. feels so good. I made it back to Sequoia Lodge and I just wanted to share my thoughts on the Disney Electrical Sky Parade and also the Disney Dreams Fireworks Show. Now, the Disney Electrical Sky Parade was literally everything I could have possibly wanted from a drone show. Like, it was just stunning like every single part of it was so well put together the music everything i've actually never seen a electrical parade that disney have ever done my first time visiting the disney park was in 2015 so i never kind of got that experience but watching it in the sky was just amazing it's such a shame that like in paris the weather isn't consistently good because so many nights it's kind of put off due to bad weather and that kind of thing so I'm just so fortunate that we got to see it today um, but it was literally everything I could have wanted from a show it was just beautiful and just stunning then Disney Dreams is like nostalgic to me um, it was my first ever Disney firework show that I've ever ever seen and it was just so lovely to see it again um, it made me realize actually how similar to happy ever after it is in terms of like the song choices and that kind of thing like it's got like the tangled part and it's got a like, friend like me and all that kind of thing like it's quite a similar structure um it's nowhere near as good as happy ever after um it's not one that makes me feel emotional or anything like that um disneyland paris fireworks never have done that but it's just such a nice fireworks show it is quite dated and it felt very dated watching it like the projections aren't quite as crisp as they are when you watch happy ever after and the song choices aren't quite up to date because it is an older show so i'm not sure uh, it was nice that they brought it back i just want something brand new from disneyland paris and i want it to be something really really good like i'd love to disneyland paris to have something that's on happy ever after level don't think it's going to happen but we can dream we can dream it's going to happen but um, fireworks were really, really good. Uh, we waited around for quite a long time, obviously an hour and a half, but it was worth it. So we are at Walt Disney Studios, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Um, it'd be great to get back onto all of them classic rides like Tower of Terror and Crush's Coaster. So can't wait to do that. We've also got a really exciting dinner reservation booked at Shea Remy, which we've never done Shea Remy before. So I'm excited to do that and have a proper table service restaurant, which obviously we haven't done today. Um, but thank you so much for joining me on this travel day slash day one, because we've had an amazing day. Hope you enjoyed it coming along with me next week you'll see day two which obviously i'll be at walt disney studios so make sure you're hitting that like button that subscribe button and also make sure you're getting notifications so you don't miss out on any of my videos thank you so, so much for watching and i will see you guys real soon bye guys